Top of the morning to you, Mickey Meisner at the Congan Water Store, and welcome to Tuesday Water Talk. Uh, we wanted to talk about the microclustering today, so each week we're going to go over one of the seemingly magical properties of the water, and hope everybody's doing well. I'll give you guys a few minutes to get on and get situated, and hashtag live. If you're watching it live or a hashtag replay, uh, just put your comments down below and feel free to ask any questions. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of presentations, um, tests here to kind of demonstrate the microclustering and talk a little bit about what's going on in the machine and why that happens and really what that means for you in your cells. Congan water has been called alkaline water for as long as I've known about it and the bottled water companies caught on and wanted to jump on the bandwagon and so they started bottling alkaline water which you can make any water alkaline you can put pH drops in it you can put baking soda in it put minerals in it and boop, now it's alkaline um, thank you Tracy Grant for that little sound effect because I'm stealing it <laughs> uh, Anyway, so Kangen water is so much more than just alkaline water. It is full of antioxidants, which we will talk about next week, and it's microclustered, which we will talk about this week. But really underneath it all, and the point that I wanna talk about every week and all the time, is how the three properties work together to drive oxygen and nutrients into your cells and get waste out of your cells. So the microclustering plays a really big part of that, and here's how it works. So the water goes in through the, the intake hose and it first the machine filters it. And then very like grotesquely simplified, what the machine is doing is it's energizing and separating. And that energy is what gives it the antioxidants and that energy is what creates all of the other properties as well. That separation is separating the minerals and the ions so the alkaline minerals are retained in the drinking waters and come out the top hose and the acidic minerals are purged out of the bottom hose. That separating also separates the way that water molecules cluster together. So what does that mean? Well, if you think about water, water comes in different phases. It comes in different states. It's a crystal, it's a liquid, it's a solid. Water is actually one of the most mysterious substances on the planet. And if you want to do a little homework, you can look up Dr. Masato Emoto, Hidden Messages in Water, and he talks about the shape of water. Um, and the, the structure of water is something that has been studied for years. There's um, a book called, let's see, by, by Dr. Mushik Jean that talks about the structure of water. And it's something that is a little bit mysterious, but science can explain it. So you will never see one molecule of water. It's a gas, right? You boil water and woo, it disappears. It goes up into the air, so it turns into a gas. So water, just because it's water, actually it clusters together. And the more it sits still, the, the more polluted it is, the more clustering happens. So in nature, if you were to go out into the woods and you were looking for water, you would never drink out of a pond because that's toxic. It's considered dead water. So water that is in nature that is considered healthy is moving. It's from a waterfall, it's going down a stream, and so it gathers energy from nature, from the minerals and from the sunlight and from that movement. And that actually creates a different structure in the water. Now there's a few places in nature where restructured alkaline antioxidant water can be found. And it's usually near a glacier or the bottom of a waterfall and people that live there have a tendency to have very long-lived lives. For instance, the Hamza tribe in Nepal um, have a tendency to live to 100, 120 years old. And when we think of the elderly being that age, we, at least I know I do, picture in America an elderly person sitting in a wheelchair on lots of medications. But it's different there. The, they live longer and they're healthier, so their quality of life is a lot longer. And what they've discovered in these places in nature is that the water has very interesting qualities, which is what the machine, the Kangen water machine, was designed to replicate. And one of those properties is the fact that it has a smaller molecular structure. 
So the water goes in and it is energized and separated. And that separation, all that energy fractionates the way the water molecules cluster together. So a regular water molecule coming out of your tap or even out of bottled water, it's typically runs about 15 to 20, up to 100 molecules per cluster. So you think of it like a, a cluster of grapes, if you will. Now your cells have an outer skin called a lipid. And there's almost like a, if you picture a chain link fence, it's like a screen to keep impurities from going into the cell. So that big cluster of grapes is gonna have a hard time penetrating through that cell wall. The, and the more um, chaotically structured it is and the bigger the cluster, the harder time it's gonna have getting through that cell wall. So when the, when the machine energizes the water, it fractionates the way the molecules cluster together and breaks it down into, if you picture smaller clusters of grapes, which will have a much easier time getting through that cell wall. So it's about six times smaller than regular water. So it breaks it down into what's called a hexagonal water molecule, which interestingly enough is the same shape as the pores on that outer cell wall. So the smaller water molecules are more easily able to drive oxygen and nutrients into the cells and get waste out of the cells. So how do we put that in a word picture for you? So I'm gonna take, just to give you a visualization, I'm gonna take some tomatoes and I'm gonna soak some in the strong alkaline water and then I'm gonna soak some in the tap water. So I poured some tap water in this cup right here and some come in, let's see, here's the, um, where's my 11.5? into here and I'm just going to let these sit for a few minutes while I talk and the microclustering the higher up in pH it goes the more microclustering happens so this 11.5 is very microclustered and it will actually emulsify oil now think about what that's doing to your fat cells so to illustrate that I'm going to take I'm going to push this aside just for a minute while it sits and works its magic so typically when I take my, when I bring my uh, produce home, I will soak it in 11.5 to pull the oil-based herbicides and pesticides off. But I just want to illustrate what, what's going on. So I've got here some toasted sesame oil. And as we all know, seventh grade science, water and oil don't mix. So I'm gonna pour some into these cups. And just to illustrate that water and oil don't mix, I'll put some tap water one and I will use some Kangen water in another so this is 11.5 I poured this a little bit earlier and as you can see it emulsifies what does that mean that means the water molecules are so small that they are actually oops, you can see it behind my coat here they are actually going in between the water molecules and binding together so in the tap water the oil floats because the water has a thicker structure and so it can't get in between the molecules. Again, think about what that's doing in your fat cells. So this water has a tendency to drive oxygen and nutrients into your cells more efficiently because of that microclustering. So I'm gonna do another little test just so you can see. Just a typical green tea bag. If you have any questions, type them in the comments bar Marty's behind the camera on the other side. Say, hey Marty, hashtag live if you're watching live and hashtag replay if you're watching the replay and feel free to go ahead and ask any questions on there. So in the meantime, I've just got some over the counter, regular old green tea and I'm gonna take the tap water again and pour it in here. And I'm going to take, now this is just 9.5 drinking water and pour it in here. Now, typically, what do you do when you make tea? You heat the water. Why do you heat the water? Because it changes the molecular structure. It makes it smaller. So I can actually make tea with kangen water. See how fast that changes? So this is 9.5 kangen water, and I can actually make 32 cups of tea with cold kangen water with one tea bag. See how that works? This is just, it's, it's pretty amazing. So um, one thing I wanna show you is if I take the kangen water, it has a tendency to disperse the properties. So if I were taking vitamins, for instance, the kangen water is actually gonna pull those vitamins 
and disperse them more efficiently into my cells. So this is the, um, the drinking water, pumping water, and this is our tap water. And can you see the difference in the color there? So I, I wore a white shirt on purpose. So this is the Konkan water and it has a tendency to help drive oxygen and nutrients into your cells more efficiently. So if you're taking vitamins, you get to absorb more of them. Whereas if you're taking vitamins with regular water, you can only absorb, well, since everything that happens in your, water, happens in your body happens in water, you're only going to absorb 15 to 20% of your vitamins and nutrients if you can only absorb about 15% of your water, which is what you can expect to absorb if you're drinking tap water or bottled water, well water, whatever water. With Kangen water, you get to absorb 85 to 95% of this water and it makes great tea, cold. So let's take these, um, let's take the tomatoes, put these aside and I believe these ones were the ones that I soaked in the 11.5. And these are the tap water tomatoes. Now, what's in this water? Well, what's in this water was whatever the oil-based stuff was that was on the produce. And I wish you could taste these because these taste a lot different than these. I do this in live presentations which welcome to the COVID new normal, we can't do right now. But um, I've actually had people spit these out at me <laughs> after tasting the good tomatoes. So what happens is, is we just get used to eating whatever pesticides are on the produce and that becomes our normal. Um, and you know, they just taste how they taste. So until you've taken, taken the pesticides and herbicides off and actually tasted what the tomato tastes like without that stuff, you'll find that they're a lot less bitter. So we are open Monday, Wednesday, Friday here at the Kangen Water Store, and we would love to have you try this water in action. If you haven't tried it yet, come on in. We'll give you two weeks free, just so you can take it for a test drive in your body and see how you feel, and put it to the test. I would love to see your pictures. If you own a machine and you've um, done some of these experiments, feel free to post a picture in the comment box or even a video and you know show us what you do with the water. Again, hashtag live if you're watching live, hashtag replay if you're watching replay, and I'm just gonna say, here's to your health.